This is the U.S. intelligence agency mind control. Border crossings into the United States from Mexico have dropped precipitously in the last few months. But farther south, hundreds of thousands of migrants are still making dangerous journeys. Is she also, if she can intro our own package goals. here, what do you think? Introing her own package? Maybe. The Atlantic September issue, titled 70 Miles in Hell, documents migrants' efforts traveling through the Darien Gap, a once considored impassable region connecting Central and, and South America. this is where the America. screwworms are going to come from, according to Michael Caitlin the Murderer. Caitlin Dickerson made several reporting trips oh, into the jungle interview. following okay. migrants through the crossing. Bro, she joins. they're bringing on somebody who, they're okay, so they're bringing on somebody who actually went to the Gap. I was going to be, like, shocked if, like, uh, the PBS journalist deployed that far, because mm. she, was, she was deployed in Mexico, like, mm -hmm. two months ago. Right? When did that really, really good field report she do happen? You remember that? Because a two-parter. A couple weeks ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe I think because it was when mm -hmm. um, it was right when the um, uh, Greta Abbott shut down the boat ramp. Uh -huh. It was around that time. Yeah. So okay. it was. Well, considering that this is just going to be an interview. Well, it's about the Darien Gap, though. Yeah, but it's still just an interview. Uh, it's just a talking head? <clears throat> it's got oh, this... some pictures. Yeah, it's got some well, data. It's... Now. Caitlin, welcome back. Thanks when for do we point. get reporting on the Darien? Yeah, true. The only person down us. there writing anything about it is Michael, Michael the Murderer. murderer. Mm. Operation Thanks Birdie so much for having me What does he call it? And photographer I don't, Lindsay I don't know. Adarian. You're, you're the one obsessed with Operation him. Operation Burning Edge is what he calls it. <laughs> oh, made a number of trips to the Darien Gap, this <laughs> deadly, nearly impenetrable jungle that hundreds of thousands of people like, still walk every children, single year. Oh, Caitlin, no. for people who have never been there, will never be able to go there, just describe to us what it was like for you to I, make that journey, like, what out to the you, Darien is like one of those fucking dream shoots for me. It's like up mm -hmm. there. Like, oh my god. Like, if I die there, then I die there. You know? Because, yes. like, it's like harder to get there than it is to fucking like go and report in Syria, you mm -hmm. know? Like, yeah. the insurance alone to even, like, get a story out there, to send reporters out there is insane. Just because it's so dangerous? Yeah! Yeah is with you. The Darien Gap is this narrow strip of land that extends out of Look northern Colombia into Bro. southern Panama. It's yeah, only put a border wall in the Darien Gap. I'm sure it will last more than a week. <laughs> the most inhospitable place on earth. Like it's, it's like it's easier to cross the Sierra Desert than the Darien Gap. Fucking idiot way to walk north out of South America. It's very, very dense. It's mountainous. And the list of threats that migrants who make this crossing are facing is very long. Everything from flash floods, which are quite common because it rains on a daily basis, to falling. People have heart attacks from overexertion from the terrain. There are deadly snakes. There are jungle cats. And jungle on top cat. of all of the natural risks, you also have bands of robbers who will attack migrants. Migrants are very often robbed and, and unfortunately also frequently experience sexual assault on this journey. So it's, it's grueling. I mean, that's the only way to put it. It was certainly the hardest thing I've ever done physically. I think that is one of the things that sticks with me to this day. And just the amount of desperation, you know, people walk into the Darien Gap and it's almost impossible to be fully prepared. You don't know what you're going to mm -hmm. run into. And so you might run out of water, you might run out of food, even if you're healthy and you're as prepared as you can possibly be, that this is an incredibly treacherous thing to try to do. And as you include in your story, according to the United Nations, more than 800,000 people could make that same journey this year. That would be a more than 50% spike over last year's numbers. Children under the age of five, like this young girl, this five-year-old girl named Susej, I believe her name is, that you met along the way, captured here by photographer Lindsay Adario, comforting her mother in this photo. Children under five, Caitlin, are the fastest growing group 
from spending time with these families, just tell us about them. I mean, why are these numbers surging so dramatically now? I think the first thing that I heard from most of the parents who had young children with them in the Darien Gap is that they would rather be anywhere we else. Should expand so the a gap lot then. of families, including yeah, bro, Susan, just make the rainforest bigger than the fuck. Like you <laughs> cannot do anything there. Like you cannot build any type of structure. It is its own thing. It is a fucking ecosystem that is impassable. Like we, there's there there's only been like one vehicle that's made it through there and it's it's a documentary on these guys in the 70s and their jeep enthusiasts right being like we can drive anywhere so there's a road that goes from like alaska down to the bottom of south america except it stops for the gap right mm -hmm. so the documentary is about them driving from the tip of north america down to south america right the entire documentary is them just crossing the gap with jeeps and what they have to do to cross it so it's like like because everything else is them just driving on the road so it's not like yeah so it's like so we you know we drove for two weeks now we're at the gap and that's how the fucking documentary starts it's hilarious there's not a it's single a, challenging road it's a fucking awesome documentary like if you're like a car enthusiast but also like uh maybe like you know you like planet earth you know, mm. those BBC documentaries or something like that. It's just, there's nothing like this documentary, of course, because nobody has been crazy enough to do it except mm. these guys. The Amazon should pay the Top Gear guys a lot of money to do it. That would be cool to have Top Gear <laughs> try to do it. <laughs> I, I reckon they'd probably die. <laughs> they would definitely be whinging the whole time. <laughs> a lot, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of people do die there days, her name's Susie in English, they had tried resettling first in Chile. They were originally from Venezuela. They couldn't make things work there. I mean, lots of places in Latin America where people might prefer to resettle, their economies were devastated by the pandemic. And so the Darien Gap is this last resort option. You know, the smugglers who shepherd people into the Darien Gap do mislead people about what they're in for, make it seem like it's going to be easier. But most people who show up at the mouth of the jungle with young kids know that they're risking their lives and know that they're risking their children's lives. We know, of course, many of those people are hoping to make it all the way to the United States. The Biden administration, of course, put tougher border restrictions into place back in early June, severely limiting who can legally enter and claim asylum. And that has contributed to a dramatic decline. You know what would really help all of these people not die in the Darien Gap? Open stability borders. open borders they can just come oh well, i mean i mean if they were chartering flights chartering flights and such shit mm. yeah just being like this many people can come a day open borders mm -hmm. yeah if i mean they kind, illegally... they, kind of, they kind of do have that mm. but like even people from China go to South America and cross the gap. That's fucking insane. Why like, not just go to Mexico? Because it's Panama. Easy, it, because because it's harder to fucking get into Mexico. Really? Yeah, because Mexico has like all these like Mexico has amazing um uh immigration oh policies God. at the end of the day. I mean the United States has helped and paid for that. Hey, Liber idiot. Liberals don't believe in open borders, you fucking idiot. <laughs> liberals did, did believe you, in borders. That's did you not hear about like Kamala Harris's speech about how hard she wants the border closed? Are you like, retarded? Liberal lib liberal ideology literally was like brought us borders. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> at the U.S. southern border. John Stossel, no The nation libtard. state. The John, nation state. John Stossel, the known libtard. Robbie on rising, known libtard. <laughs> we went from around 250,000 people apprehended in this. Buddy, it's PBS. She's talking about Kamala. Oh. December to reportedly just 57,000 in July, though official numbers are not yet out. 
So Caitlin, did people you met along the way know about those restrictions? Had word made it down to them? Not at all. There's so many different factors that come into play here, but usually when people are making the decision to migrate, they're not talking about U.S. policy. because. I mean, that was basically open borders, wasn't it? The uh, 80s policy? Fact, yeah. The, Ra- the Reagan policy? I mean, I think that there are good things in this uh, bipartisan border bill mm. that the that Trump voted down just to keep immigration as a problem. Yeah. Instead of like uh fixing the problem. Yeah, and now look, it now it doesn't runnable. even fucking matter. When yeah. was the last time you heard about immigration? I mean, Romney almost softened the that was one of Romney's things. They were softening their position on the border mm. because because uh like all these farmers depend on it anyway, right? Yeah. So they were cha- they were trying to change the actual messaging on it. Mm-hmm. And uh mm-hmm. You know, like basically Romney's position is the current Democrat position right Mm -hmm. now. What, you know, like Joe Biden's bipartisan border bill, you know, that's a Romney's definitely going to vote for that. You know, Mm -hmm. like, yeah, I'm sure he still did, you know, because he's he's, you know, he's one of the few in there who like beats to his own drum. (laughs) But again, yeah. So the thing is, is uh, uh, I don't know how uh, true this is, but if you. Uh, cross the Darien Gap once, odds are you're going to cross it again in the future. Mm. So uh, most people who cross it sometimes are crossing it for the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth time. Crazy. Because they get deported, they get to the border, get Mm. deported back after the fucking asylum claim. And then immediately they set out to cross cross the gap again. Mm -hmm. And they it's not, like it's not like you can, it's not like you can like, oh, I've been through it before. I'll just take the same route I did before. No, there is no route. The <laughs> environment is like constantly changing there. Like day to day, it's a vastly different environment than it was the day before. Things are constantly eroding, sliding away, river current changes, they rush, all this stuff. You know, mosquito outbreaks happen. Trees fall, you know, because it's like the ground is so soft there. Mm. You know, anything. And it's the the humidity means that the anything that's metal, wood, instantly rots and rusts and breaks apart and corrodes. But it's full of life. That's that's why it's so deadly. Yeah. You know, it's literally, you know, annihilation. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's what the gap is it's that zone that they go in where it's refracting the dna and shit that's pretty much what happens in the gap it's it's fucking wild wild place in life or death circumstances which is why they're willing to take risks like crossing the darien gap um, the biden administration's asylum policies have had some impact, I'm sure, as has its pressure on Mexico to crack down and basically intercept people on their way to the United States. One Biden administration policy that people in the Darien Gap did know about was the CBP-1 app that's being used to relieve pressure at the border so you can apply for permission to fly to the border. And Is that Biden's app that he came... They literally... What did I I just say? They kind of already have that. They can Mm. seek permission to fly to the border, so you can wait. You don't even have to cross the gap now. You could potentially wait to that plane <laughs> ticket and then get your asylum. Epic. Plane. This is great. This is really good. This yeah. is a good. Change. I mean, there needs to be the like the the bill that they're that the bipartisan bill that the mm-hmm. Republicans negotiated. Yeah. Um. I mean, it. it, it a lot of mm-hmm. stuff in there needed to happen. Yeah. And the bringing back child separation. And yeah, pretending like a, it's not, not Trump's policy is not the policy to win. Yeah, not not a good move. So I hope this guy is still here and is learning something and actually listening, as opposed to being an idiot in in taking Fox News idiocies and uh, Ben Shapiro isms. Like just relax. Hey, isn't Ben Shapiro supposed to be a libertarian? The main thing the bipartisan bill cool. is missing is a path to citizenship. Just like uh mm-hmm. just like Biden's controversial IRS expansions, 
these are things that just need to modernize a lot of these departments. Now, we yeah. can be, uh, from a policy perspective, we can be against these departments. We can be for open borders, things like that. That said, the it's, you know, like any, the, it's, the, it's like the, the border policy is like gun control, you know? Like anything that's a policy is going to piss uh, open immigration advocates and, and and Latin Americans and things like that. They're gonna it's going to piss them off. They're going to be against the policy, right? No matter what. But mm -hmm. I still think you know. Obviously, the app that was a great policy to put that in place. But uh, again, it's how to how to mitigate people being displaced in the first place. I think is always the solution, whether you're for or against open borders or immigration or anything like that you should be concerned in how to stabilize the country so people don't have to leave because people yes. don't actually want to leave their home countries you know if people didn't leave vietnam until it fell you know they, they instead stayed in a war zone they rather live in a war zone than live under the Viet Cong. right they didn't flee until after it fell get an interview uh, rather than having to take a more dangerous uh, option and it's all playing a role but it, it's not enough to completely eliminate this migration because of the circumstances that people are fleeing and so i always caution against saying you know border crossings are down this month and it's all <laughs> and attributable I, to a policy derailing, that's just not detailing. from the white house it's never that simple when it comes to a global issue it does go back in some ways to this other recent piece you wrote for The Atlantic in which you said, quote, trying to stop migration at the border is like telling someone they can't run a marathon when they're at the finish line. This was in a piece that was actually because entitled, like, there's no such thing as a border czar. You were referencing there, of course, how Republicans have been labeling Vice President Kamala Harris. And we should point out she, yes, was not charged with the border per se, but she was charged with addressing root causes. It sounds like mm -hmm. from your reporting, the root causes forcing people to leave have only gotten worse over time. Is that fair? It is, but the answer is a little bit more complicated in that when the Biden administration came to office and Kamala Harris was given this position, most people crossing the southern U.S. border were coming from Central America. And so that's where she focused her efforts. She raised about five and a half billion dollars in private funds to support more jobs and improved quality of life in Central America. And migration from Central America is going down. But the problem is that circumstances have worsened elsewhere. And so we have increasing numbers of people crossing the border from Venezuela, from China, from Haiti, from Ecuador, uh, from yeah, throughout so, Latin so that's America. The thing. You know, people from Haiti, think about this. People from Haiti, mm. go through the gap. Yeah. Because it's easier for them to go through the gap than to just like, take a boat over to Mexico or float over to America, right? Cubans go through the gap. Isn't that wild? Because how, how do you... Crazy you choice. There's no way you can fucking, like, there's no way you can shut down the gap. What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. You're gonna How are you going to fucking police that place? Yeah, exactly. Go ahead. Go ahead. Send a fucking unit in there that specializes in living there and shit. Mm-hmm. American diplomat or official can't change circumstances abroad on their own. But I think the changing dynamic underscores I do just know how tough someone this who is. does you live your there. efforts in one place and then the they gap. get more difficult in another. In the, like, in the, the Atlantic like at, least, covers at least close enough to it that they have some of the same, like it's the, he's like, a, he does body, he does the ethnic body painting that they mm. do. Um, and it's throughout the tribes throughout that region do them. So he's close enough to the gap. Mm, okay. And, you know, and like basically because the, there is people that do live there, you know, or maybe not directly in the gap as much, but there are there are some. It's a crazy place to live. Mm, it's where they always lived. Her story, 70 Miles in Hell, is out now. Caitlin, thank you so much for joining us. Good to speak with you. Thank you for having me. Are you aware of a CIA psychological profile about you, sir? Would you be interested in hearing what the CIA had to say? This secret study portrays as a brilliant but dangerous megalomaniac 
who is likely to pursue his own aims in disregard of U.S. interests. He's an uncertain ally. Shall I go on, or would you prefer that I stop, sir?